Hello, fellow mompreneurs. Welcome to the Real Moms Podcast, the go-to space for resilient entrepreneurs who are striving for abundant living. I'm your host, Shay Spitz, a mompreneur and a realtor here in Columbus, Nebraska. Are you a mom juggling the hustle of entrepreneurship, family life, and personal growth? Well, you're in the right place. On this podcast, we dive deep into the real, unfiltered stories of incredible women who are navigating the journey of mompreneurship. We'll celebrate the victories, share practical insights, and acknowledge that it's okay to face challenges along the way. Success isn't about the destination. It's about the journey and the growth we experience as we balance our careers and the chaos of family life. Whether you're a seasoned mompreneur or just starting on this exciting path, join me and our amazing guests as we explore what it truly means to be a resilient entrepreneur striving for abundant living. Get ready for real, raw, and remarkable conversations that will inspire and uplift you. Because here at The Real Moms Podcast, we believe in the power of community, authenticity, and the strength that comes from embracing the journey together. So grab your coffee, find a cozy spot, and let's dive into the world of mompreneurship. This is The Real Moms Podcast, where we celebrate the hustle, honor the struggle, and thrive as resilient entrepreneurs living abundantly. Welcome to another episode of Real Moms Podcast. I like to start off every podcast with a motivational quote. And today's quote is, never say anything about yourself you do not want to come true. And that is by Brian Tracy. Today, we have April Tucker. She is a team lead with Better Homes and Gardens Real Estate in the Omaha area. April is a team leader, a veteran, and a mother. She has made Offit AFB her mission. She's more than just another agent. She understands the nuances and complexities of a PCS, which we will get into a little bit more later, the VA loan, and what it takes to buy a house on a quick house hunting trip or sight unseen from a world away. April will talk about some of her uh, tricks on staying organized as a mother while running a successful career in real estate. Welcome to the show, April, and thank you so much for being here. Uh, thanks so much for having me, Shay. I'm really looking forward to our chat today. Yeah. So obviously, so we got talking a little bit before, but tell me a little bit about what Offit AFB is, your experience as a veteran, and then also what PCS is for those who don't know, myself included. So... <laughs> Yeah, so those are all military terms. So off at Air Force Base, that is the Air Force military base that's here in the Omaha Metro. It's down in Bellevue, Nebraska. And there are constant turnover of military coming in and out. So when military is coming in or leaving, they usually are on orders to PCS, which is a permanent change of duty station. So it's just when military is moving from one base to another base. So maybe incoming from McDill down in Florida or something like that. So do you see that's where maybe a lot of your business is coming from because you are so versed in mm-hmm. in that area? Yeah, I would say since day one of my career, I've really thrown myself heavily into the military community. I just, I'm prior army, my husband's prior air force, you know, and I've seen military life from so many different angles. I like to tell people I've been deployed. I've been the one who's home when my loved ones are deployed. I know what both of those feel like. I've PCS so many times and had to change houses, um, so on and so forth. So I feel like I've got a very well-rounded base, no matter who I'm working with, to have some empathy with what they're going through. Um, So I think that's really helped me get a good grounding here in the military community. Yeah, I would agree. And how often do you see people having to move bases and stations and things along those lines? Oh my gosh, constant. You know, about every four years or so is about the benchmark for when people are moving in and out. So, I mean, we have thousands of people incoming and outgoing every year here at office. It's a very fast churn, which makes for a really great business model. Because when you're dealing with people coming in and they know that they have to buy a house and you've got that business and you stay in front of them on a great referral basis, now they're referring you to their friends that are incoming or outgoing. And then in about four or five years, they're going to have to sell. And as long as you stay in front of them and you keep that connection just really genuine and authentic, then you pick up that business for when they need to sell as well. So it's just a really great kind of niche to get into if you understand the world. 
Yeah, especially because you're part of the world too. It's not just understanding it, but you've been part of it. And so somebody like me, who I have no experience with that, if I'm trying to come in and have that empathy for someone, they're like, lady, you have no idea what you're talking about. Like, you know what I mean? Like, that is not my area. I've had family who have been in the military and the army and things along those lines, but I have not had any direct experience with it. Where you have, like you said, on the deployment side and when you're home with your family when your loved ones are deployed. So you've seen both sides of it and you can have that empathy for those who are going through those because it's not, I'm sure you probably get used to it a little bit, but it's still a very emotional mental thing that people have to deal with. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's very big. It's very heavy. It's hard on the kids. It's hard on the spouses. So just lots of pivots in that world, but a really fun world to get immersed in. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's really neat. So do you, are you still active or reserve or anything along those lines or is your husband? Nope. We are both officially out now. He still works on Offutt Air Force Base. He's a government employee. So he does contracting for the government. So he still works down there on the base, but not still active duty or anything like that. Okay. So maybe another, if there's another agent out there or a mom agent who is listening to this podcast, what would you recommend that they do to kind of get into what you're doing or make those connections with somebody who's moving in and moving out? What could they do? So I think a really good starting step is to go get your MRP certificate, which is the military relocation professional certification. It's just a really good deep dive into things like what does PCS mean? What is BAH? How much is BAH? How often do you move? Right. All of that kind of stuff. You know, so I think that's a really great class that people can take just to start to learn all the basics because there's so much lingo and so much jargon in that world. Right. Once you have that, then it's really easy to start to market yourself online through a really strategic ad campaign using videos, whatnot, to market yourself as the go-to military agent in your area. From there, it becomes really easy to start to jump onto like local Facebook pages, like for example, office spouses and family, office moms in the know, whatnot, and start to market yourself on there and be the voice who's the very knowledgeable about military moves. So I think that would be, a, if I had to do it over again, if I had no yeah. experience, I would do that route. Okay. And then do you have to be a former military to be able to take those classes or is that just anybody can take a class yeah. like that? Yeah, and where could they go to, to take a class like that? You can go to the CE shop. You can go to results, any of those kind of websites that are, you know, where you'd go get your CE basically as a realtor, mm -hmm. you can find it in any of those. And what's it called? What was it called again? MRP, the Military Relocation Professional Certification. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Okay. No, that, that's awesome. No, that's really good to know. There's just, there's so many different ways that agents can market themselves and get very specific. So, I mean, especially if you have that experience or you have family who have something that's like kind of tugged on your heart a little bit, that would definitely be a good resource to start. And I like how you said, start connecting with those Facebook groups online and just really get familiar with what those terms mean. Cause obviously before this podcast, I'm like, what does this mean? What does that mean? Cause right. I think there's a lot more terms than I even realize at all, but no, that is great information. And I assume that you're probably part of a lot of those things at this point in time. Absolutely. Yep. For sure. Yeah. And mm -hmm. then how do you, you said, you know, staying in front of people, how do you stay in front of your clients, past clients sphere? Oh my gosh. So many ways. I love it. So I am inherently like a very shy person. I am not a person who's easily put myself out there and go to networking events and do the big client events and all that kind of stuff. Cause I'm just much more like behind my computer screen type of a person. And a couple of things that I've developed over the years that works for me with that every month, everybody in my sphere, I don't like to call them like my database. They're my connections. So if yes. you're in there, how do you stay in front of your connections? I just think that's much warmer. I wish everyone was calling them connections. So every month, all of my connections get a very personalized newsletter from me. So that kind of talks about almost like a Christmas card style, little letter, like about what's going on right now in my world and pictures of the family and pop mess mom corner and all that kind of stuff, right? So something very personal. So they get that 
that in the mail once a month, printed and mailed. Once a month, they get an email from me that's like more real estate related, market stats, here where the interest rates are, that kind of stuff. So those are two big moving wheels that I have going at all times. I also developed several years ago a Facebook client VIP page. So I took all of my past clients and all my upcoming clients and any of my connections, and they're all in my VIP group. Now I can stay in front of them very consistently, right? And I'll get on there and announce birthdays and home anniversaries and upcoming events. And, you know, hey, guys, there's bad weather rolling through the area. Don't forget to do this or home maintenance tips. And the cool thing about that is that my clients get on there and they all kind of get to know each other, Mm -hmm. right? And so one will get on there and be like, hey, guys, does anyone have recommendations for a roofer? And I'll have three other clients get on there and be like, oh, I had this experience. Now they're chatting. Now they're talking. So when I get them together in person at events or whatnot, they're starting to get to know each other. Yeah. Yeah. So that would be another really big part of it. And then, of course, just events. We always do the big fall event every year. We try to do like a spring or summer event for them. And then we do our big Christmas giveaway um, every year where we get really involved with the families in the area that are going through this absolute hardship for the year. And we throw a huge big Christmas party for all those kids, for all those babies and buy them literally everything on their Christmas wish list. And they walk away with so many presents and household goods and so much food and the connections all really get involved in the drive and supporting it and that kind of stuff. So we have a lot of different pegs that are in motion for staying in front of them from a very genuine, we're very big on just being authentic and genuine versus like, don't forget I'm a real estate agent. Yeah, that's boring. Nobody wants yeah. to hear that. Yeah. So no, yeah. nobody really cares about all of your closings every single day or every single no. week. And you're all of your new listings. It's good to know that. But I think people also want to know that you are human. And if you're just if you want to just post like one time a month on your closings for that month, or you don't need to do every single one because it's okay. Like as sad as this is, people almost hate success. <laughs> that sounds terrible, but Do you you find that though too? I find that it's salesy and I find that people don't like salesy. I also find that when the only thing that you're posting on your business page, on your personal page, whatever it may be is, hey guys, got somebody under contract. Hey guys, close the house. Hey guys, got a new buyer. Hey guys, did this. One, it comes across braggy. Two, it comes across like our job super easy. And no wonder there's this big perception out there that real estate agents don't do anything and get paid like a ton of money for just Mm -hmm. opening up doors, right? It's not the truth. (laughs) And so I love teaching on, I just did a big class on it yesterday, finding your superpowers in your business, finding your superpowers in your branding. Nobody wants to know you as, you know, Oh, real estate agent extraordinaire. They want to know you for being a veteran. They want to know you for being somebody who loves baking, for being a bread maker. They want to know you for being the sports mom, for being the mom that's always five minutes late because you can't get those kids out the door without screaming. And then you lose your voice. And then everyone looks at you like you're crazy, right? That's what people want to see. And when they see your superpowers and they see who you truly are, they don't forget about the fact you're a real estate agent. Mm -hmm. You just appear that much more authentic to them and somebody they want to connect with. So post about that. No one cares about the other stuff, in my opinion. Yep. Nope. I would absolutely agree. Be true. Be Show people that you are human. Show people that you do have mistakes and that you do make mistakes and you are not a perfect mom. You're not yeah. a perfect wife or spouse or whatever the case may be. You're not a perfect agent because nobody's perfect. And I have made so many mistakes as, a, as an agent, but my biggest difference is that I do own up to it. Like I will admit if I make a mistake because I do make mistakes and I let yeah. people know like, Hey, I'm human too. So if there is anything that you want to question, please do because I'm human as well. I do everything that I can. I stay up to date on educating myself, my e- my CE classes, all of those things. But at the same time, we are still human. One of my questions, you had talked about the newsletter and all of that. What sort of systems do you have in place that kind of keeps that ball rolling mm-hmm. and streamlined in a sense? Because I'm assuming that you're still putting the effort, you're still putting together those newsletters, all of that, and then you're having to mail them out. Are you using a system? Are you using a website to do all of those things for you? 
Yeah, so it's really easy just to have Canva and to create your template every month in Canva. Once you have your template and you have each section set exactly how you want it, it's as easy as once a month popping in, updating the color, updating the name of the month, and maybe some pictures or a little bit. Like, like it becomes very easy. And when you're in your quiet moments, because we all know here in Nebraska, right, that we have a quieter kind of late fall into December, January, February, we start to see things crack back open. I love to take the quiet moments and to create six to 12 months worth of a template, right? So I already know February is probably going to be pink or red with hearts. And I know that I'm probably going to want to put a February home maintenance list on there. And I know I'm probably going to want to put pictures of whatever, right? You can pre-create every single month for the year. So when February rolls around, all I have to do is change up my little letter that always says, Hey guys, I cannot believe that weather that we got here in January. Was anybody else going completely stir crazy when they were trapped in your house with your children for 10 days straight? I didn't think we'd see that here in whatever. One of the things that we did to stay busy, we went outside and we made snow ice cream. What did you do, right? To stay busy with your kids, go chat about it on the VIP page, right? Whatever. That's all you really need to change out at that point. If you've already pre-built everything else in your quiet moments, then it's as easy as going to the printer, printing it off, mailing it off, right? Mm -hmm. At this point in my business, and one of the things I learned very early on as I was trying to scale and grow a big business was it's okay to hire in leverage. I'm a huge fan of leverage. So for a long time, I have had somebody else hired for me who did all the printing and the mailing. Now I have somebody hired who does the creation of all of it. So slowly I've built in pegs over time as I've been able to afford it to be able to take the bulk of that off of me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think that so many people try to leverage right away. But at the same time, I think with you being in and doing and grinding, doing those things, and that's what goes back to as an agent, it seems so easy, but you don't realize the amount of back work that we do to stay oh in front God. of people, to stay top of mind, to do mm -hmm. those kinds of things, to create those newsletters, to take that time during the downtime and create those templates for the next year and do that every single year and stay consistent with it. But mm -hmm leveraging is a huge thing as well. And I'm just going to throw this out to you, but have you ever heard of tpmco.com? No, tell me about it. So I use it for all of my postcards, my mailings, whenever I'm going to have a client appreciation event, it's fantastic. So I'll do a lot of my creation through Canva. And then I just upload that template to tpmco, upload my list and send it out. They also do newsletters. They also send out newsletters and it's so cost efficient. They do the printing. You can upload your, you can contact. And if you're doing your own templates, you'll probably need to contact somebody directly and say, Hey, this is what I want to do every month. What mm -hmm. is the price? If I just send you the template, can you print them, send them and do all of that? Like I have newsletters that go out quarterly and I think I pay like 80 cents a newsletter. I just, Oh, that's really awesome. It's amazing. I already wrote that down to so go check it out. I like that a lot. Just Shoot. I, I just got one of my example newsletters. And, but I, I think if you create your own and you just send it to your person through TPMCO, they can just have it mailed directly to your sphere, your connections every month yeah. when you get that done. And so it's cost efficient. You just do an upload and they send it out. So that I sounds that that so would be, easy. Oh, I can't yes. wait to go pick that up. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So like I do it for all my postcards. Like when I send out postcards for not thank yous, but client appreciation events and just staying top of mind, it's, like 60 cents a postcard and they do the printing. No way. Yeah. That's they so do the cheap. printing. Yeah. It's amazing. And they're mm -hmm. not the highest quality by any means, but it's still staying in front of people. And the newsletters might've been more of like a dollar 25. I can't quite remember, but even still like the, if, if you're just taking the template, sending it to them and say, Hey, send it to my connections. They mm -hmm. send it out for you. It's very cost efficient. So I love that. Yes. Yeah. Great tip today. Yes. TPMCO. It's a fantastic yes. website that I absolutely okay. love. Another one that I love, it's called AM Cards. So okay. AM, oh, yes. mm -hmm. have you heard of them? I love them. Yeah. That's more for like individual mm -hmm. mailings and stuff. They're a little bit more expensive, but the quality is much better. But you can send gifts. So anytime I get referrals, I just pop into that website, type out the letter that I want to send, put in their address. You can send brownies, cookies, teddy bears for Valentine's Day. They got all sorts of things. So like whenever I get referrals or we close on it or a listing and I want to say thank you, I just pop in there, send them a card. And because I think that's really where those personal connections come in. Mm -hmm. You know, what we were talking yes. about when you can stand out and do something 
that they don't expect you to do. And it just makes a big difference. But I actually have a marketing plan that hangs on my wall that I did during my downtime and I planned it for the entire year. Now there's going to be a few changes, things like that. But hey, I know when I come into the office, I look, oh, February 14th, this is what I have planned for today. It's not every single day. It's once a month, once a quarter and things like that. So Yep. That's Uh, very similar to what I do. Yep. I've got everything fleshed off for the whole year. I know my deadlines for it. I know who's getting what, when, why, where, how type of a deal. It has to be visual too. And I love the fact that you keep it up on the wall. I have learned just from my own style. If I don't have something I can just go to the office and sit back and look at and go, oh crap, I'm supposed to do that today. Right. If it's going to be digital, I got to go dig it up on my phone somewhere. I'm not going to do it. I need that visual in front of me. Because I forget about it, like yeah. you know, and your canvas. So this is what mine, just kidding. It's a piece of paper. It is, <laughs> so, but anyway, I was going to show that to you, but no, it, it, it was nice. And it is a lot of legwork and pre-planning and creating those templates. So I have somebody else who comes in and creates my templates. I kind of give her an idea. And then every month before we get something sent out, I just plug and play. And then I send it out to my database. So yep, it's it. just streamlining those systems and putting those things into place the way we talked about it. But something mm-hmm. that I want to jump a little bit more into is your family life. How do mm-hmm. you incorporate your kids into your business? And how are you staying connected with your kids? Because what we talked about before, it's very hard to, you know, we don't have the nine to five or the eight to five, whatever it is. And even if we are home in the evenings, our mind tends to be elsewhere. So what have you found that has helped you as a mom and a spouse? My career has just taken pivots over the last eight, nine years since I've been doing this. And it's funny because for every step of my career, I'd give you a different answer for that. Very early on in my first year, I had zero homework life balance. It was horrible. I I stepped into real estate. We weren't broke. It was nothing like that. But we were not able to get ahead financially. I had a brand new baby, like a six month old when I got licensed and a four year old with speech issues with daily speech therapy in downtown Omaha. And why in the world I jumped into real estate is beyond me. But I had a woman sit down with me and she was like, April, I made $30,000 last month selling houses. And I think you'd be really good at this. And I think you should go get your license. And I heard those numbers and I turned to my husband and I was like, I was trying so hard to help him pay a bill. I was a stay at home mom. I was doing dog sitting, just trying to come up with some extra money. I was so proud of that money. I'd put it up in a jar in my cupboard and take it out every couple of weeks and be like, Jason, I made like $80. I can help pay the phone bill. Right. So when I heard this stuff about what she was doing in real estate, I turned to my husband. I was like, I think I'm supposed to be a real estate agent. I'm going to go start my classes. And we could not afford those classes. Like when I tell you it sunk us, like that was a lot of money. So I jumped into it. And my first year in real estate, just knowing that I needed to hire help to watch, you know, my baby and my four-year-old, which was so terrifying. And knowing I had all these expenses that went into it, I was like, I cannot sink. If I sink in real estate, I am going to swamp my family. And I had great first year. I did 52 closings my first year, which was, it's a lot for your first year in real estate. I was so driven to make money and to not fail. But what it did was it caused my family and my relationship with them to take a huge step backwards. When I tell you I would be up every month, I was a brand new agent. I didn't know what I was doing. And yet I had all this. I mean, that's a lot to do your first year when you just don't know what you're doing. I was waking up every morning at 4 a.m., 5 a.m., jumping straight into work, getting those kids out the door as fast as I could to school. And then I would freaking not come home till nine o'clock, 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock at night. I didn't see them for the majority of the year. I missed their birthday parties. I missed anniversaries. I was off and running like you cannot believe my first year. And why my husband didn't leave me through that, why he didn't look at me and go, you crazy lady, you've gone way insane. He was not happy with it. It was just created a mess. So stepping into my second year, I was already one foot out the door in real estate. I was like, there is no way to manage this craziness. There's no way for me to keep up this level of success and this level of money without me completely saying goodbye to my family. Like it was horrible. We didn't get much better. My second year was even bigger, but I made the switch over to Better Homes in my second year. And I'll never forget, they hooked me up with a coach. Her name was Carol. And I'm just so thankful for Carol. And I'll never forget the day she looked at me and she said, April, you have an either or mentality. I can either go do a showing or I can go take my kids to the football game. I can either go write a contract or I can go to the birthday party. She said, 
Either or is dangerous. You have to find your both end. I can both go to this game and take care of my clients, right? Mm -hmm. And when she said that to me, it just totally shifted my thinking. And I went, oh my gosh, she's right. How do I shift this now? (laughs) Right. And so she worked with me to come up with a strategy. And I started out early on. I, I had another mom. She had young kids and she and I partnered together and we started running everything side by side. We didn't pay each other. It was nothing like that, but it was like, Hey, I've got something going on this weekend. Can you cover my business? And next weekend, I'm going to cover your business, right? So you can go hang out with your family. And if she was stuck on a random Wednesday night, it was, hey, April, can you go show a house for me? Because I've got something going on. Absolutely, girl. Can you help me out Friday night? Because I need help, right? Mm -hmm. When we started helping each other in our paperwork, hey, I've got a contract to process, but I'm just getting home. It's 10 o'clock. Can you help me with this, right? Can you get it done during the day? And I started to use that leverage and she started to use me as leverage and start there, find your partner, find that mama, find that other person that's going through the same challenges. And that's where my leverage started. And I started to see little shifts and change. And I started to be able to come home and have dinner. And I was able to start to schedule and plan out, hey, guys, I'm going to be home Monday, Wednesday, Thursday this week, but I am going to be gone Tuesday, Friday, because I'm going to be helping myself and her in her business. And then she was able to start to put a schedule in place for her family. Mm -hmm. And then eventually we hired a transaction coordinator together. And then our TC started taking off the paperwork, right? That's it. Your leverage doesn't need to be huge. Your leverage doesn't need to be something overly expensive, but your leverage has to be something that helps with the day to day and you're helping each other. So for my first like two kind of year and a half, we ran really hard together. From there, I ended up hiring in my first full-time assistant. She did transaction coordination and was an assistant who could run around and do all of the placing of the signs and the lock boxes mm-hmm. and starting to help with things like the printing and whatnot. But I waited until I was comfortable enough to hire somebody financially. Then I started paying that person about $30,000, $35,000 a year. But don't take that step if you're not ready. Yeah. Take the step of finding your tribe right? From there, things continued to scale. My first four years in the business, I went from 52 closings. I did about 10 million my first year, doubled that in my first four years to about 20 million, which was so exciting. And then started to scale back and have built an amazing team, my copper group. I've got 34 agents right now on the team. We have three, two full-time employees, one part-time employee, and literally have structured this entire team to help busy parents so they don't make and recreate those same mistakes I made early on. So yeah, I think that leverage is slow stepping. I think it should grow as your finances grow and your career grows. But I always encourage people to start with finding their real estate mom. That's it. Start with that person. I promise it's going to bring more leverage to your life. Yeah, yeah, I would agree. And just and, and being comfortable with being able to help other people and expect nothing in return. I mean, you scratch my back, I'll scratch your back, but you need to find somebody who's willing to help you if you can't do it and vice versa, that you're going to be able to help them though too. Correct. And that's the biggest, I, I think it was Randy Garn is he said that his dad always told him, do things for others and expect nothing in return because it will mm-hmm. come back to you tenfold. But I mm-hmm. like how you had talked about, I couldn't imagine, fortunately, I guess I wasn't that crazy <laughs> when it comes to getting the up that early and just grinding and then still grinding at 10 o'clock at night. And yeah. I have slowly but surely implemented things in my career to be able to take me to another level. But you also have to realize when you are putting those systems or those people in the place, you're probably going to take a little bit of a step back financially in order to pay somebody else. But in the long run, you should be able to make more because you're doing the income producing activities where it's going to be bringing in more money. But I think so many people don't start putting the people in the right places because it's going to take away from their income. When it does for a little bit and it's stressful because you're trying to get over those hurdles of hiring somebody new, figuring out what are they good at, what do they like doing, and how can you make this grow even more? And then once you start doing that and you take that leap of faith and you have Mm -hmm. the right people in the right places, your business can start to grow and you can have more free time. So I get up in the morning at 4.30 every day, but I make sure that I don't do anything with work until after I drop the kids off. It is my time in the morning. 
It is me reading. It is me network or not networking, but it is me exercising and then getting the kids up and doing all of that and then getting the kids to school and then starting my day. I love that. That sounds balanced to me. And that speaks so strongly to my current coach is Tristan Amada, excellent agent out of California. And he taught early on when I started coaching with him, he said, April, you have to get rid of the idea of balance, of a home work-life balance, because that indicates that one thing always has more importance over another. One thing's always going to be tipping the scale to rise in importance over something else, right? Mm -hmm. He's like, you need to get rid of that. Instead, I want you to think about living are creating harmony in your world. How are you going to get those quiet moments of waking up and taking care of you to work harmoniously with the balance of the rest of your day or with the, with all of that? And he says, there's going to be days when it's just full on real estate and you absolutely are hunkered down on that real estate. And there's going to be other days when it's going to be full on family and you're going to be totally hunkered down on family, but you have to figure out your rhythm in the harmony of the day. So get rid of balance. Balance is not what you're striving for. You're striving for harmony and finding the peace in your world. And that resonates. And that's exactly what you just said. You found a way to build your harmony into your day by creating Mm -hmm boundaries around your 430 to dropping off school time, right? That works for you and for your day to create that peace in your world. That's not balance necessarily. That's harmony. And that's such a cool way to look at it. I know. And I've heard people say like there in times of your career, you're going to be off balance. I mean, that's just part of it. You're going to have, like you said, you're going to have days where it's heavily real estate. You're going to have days where it's heavily family. So it's not a balance. Like you said, it's harmony or the way I like to look at it is abundance. Like you have abundance of it. Mm. You're it's both harmony and abundance. And that's what the real mom's thing is resilient entrepreneurs who are striving for abundant living. And it's, moms who are looking to have it all. It doesn't need to be that either or mentality. It is, how can I have this and this? It's the both mentality because you can. It's just Mm -hmm. figuring out what works for you and your family and then being able to implement them and stay disciplined even on the days that you don't want to do the things. Like, I don't want to get up at 4.30 every day. That sounds awful, but I do. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. You know, I don't want to work out every day, but I do, you know. It brings I mean, the peace. It does. It, it does. I, yeah, when I do those things, it may it sets my day up for success. It really really does. Have you do you do anything that helps implement your kids into your business or how do you kind of I know that you probably have those certain days where you're going to be home and you're not home. I also put my kids' activities in my calendar and they are appointments. Yeah, I look too. at my family time as appointments because as sad <laughs> as this is, clients don't respect, hey, I'm going to be home with my kids as much as they do, hey, I have a, a, an appointment already. So cool. I don't explain what my appointments are. Nope, I already have an appointment at that time. So does this right. time or this time work? You need to put your family time in as appointments. And then- And I absolutely do. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and that is just that. as sacred as a listing appointment. It, and you it, don't it, have flex in it. That's the thing. You don't yeah. have flex. That is your time with your kids. Mm-hmm. Can you imagine? I, I can't imagine. And very thankfully, I didn't grow up with this. I didn't grow up in an environment, even though my parents were both entrepreneurs and both running their own businesses. I don't remember segments of my life where I had something going on and my dad looked at me and said, hey, I'm so sorry. I'm going to put you second today. And this comes first. Mm -hmm. And I don't want my kids growing up with that same mentality. And Lord knows I blew that out of the water my first like year and a half when literally everything I did was like, hey, family, you're definitely going to come second. I'm going to come. I come first. My business comes first. My clients come first. And that was such an unhealthy place to be in, right? I'm so thankful I was able to get all of that to shift. But I do, my babies, they have grown up in my business with me. I've been doing this now for nine years and my little one's turning nine this weekend. So literally he has been immersed in this since day one. My older one, Aiden, he was four years old when I jumped in and those kids, they went most everywhere with me. And so I think at this point, my older one, probably even my younger one understand real estate better than I do. I remember early on my first year, I was even just trying to learn the process of what buying a house is as I'm out running around showing all these houses and writing all these contracts. It was an insanely crazy year. And I would have my four-year-old in the back seat and I used him to help with everything. And I would say, Hey, Aiden, can I explain the process of buying a house to you? 
You'd be like, okay, mom. And I'd be like, great. So let's say you walk into 123 Main Street and you're like, April, this is it. I want to make an offer on this house. How does this process look moving forward? And we would sit there and I would run my scripts over and over and over. I think he learned it better than I did. And to this day, he knows so much about real estate. And I would love it if he were to take that step into it someday, because I think he'll probably end up being very good at it just because he's had this experience. But they are very involved in all of the events that we do, very involved in the big Christmas giveaway party that we do every year. I love to have my older one come in the summertime. Now that he's not in kids club, he's kind of aged out of that. And he's helping prep envelopes and helping with the mailing and stuffing stuff and putting stamps on things and just kind of running around helping people with that they need to do in their world. And we're taking that up to the next level. Now this summer, he's going to be 13. And so we can do that in an even greater capacity with him this year. I just think all of that's so good for building responsibility, for yeah. building like lines of skills and just having that, hey, of kind of a, not a boss, but a boss is telling me what to do. I've got my checklist for the day. I need to make sure I'm responsible for getting each one of these things done. So I do like to keep them involved in that. I love getting them in front of my clients. I think my connections know my kids as well as I know my kids. If I've got something going on, I am not scared to show up with my children and be like, hey guys, I got the kids with me. And they're like, oh, that's so great. I'm going to have my kids with me too. Yep. Um, and I'm just very real. I'm very real when it comes to that side of things. I've never been the person. I'm not a fancy person. I'm not a dress up person. I'm not going to be the one showing up in high heels and a skirt. And I, I tell my agents all this too. If I have a listing appointment on a random Saturday afternoon, and I know I've got to head down to Bellevue, there's a good chance I'm showing up in tennis shoes with my workout clothes on, probably with dirt still on me saying, hey guys, I'm just rolling in from the park with my kids because it's a Saturday afternoon and you just mm -hmm. get me how I am. That's it. You're yeah. going to get me how I am. I'm going to live my life mm -hmm. and then I'm going to show up and I'm going to be okay with that. I have never lost a client who's looked at me and gone, oh, why do you have on like athletic wear today when I'm meeting you for the first time? That's not cool. And I don't want to work with you. But I can roll up and be like, I just came from the football game and I just yeah. come and straight it. I promise you, nobody cares. If anything, they're like, oh, that's really cool. Good for you. Yeah. Hanging out with your kids before you go to work for the day. Or so that you're willing to, you're willing to show up right after your kids' sporting event to come and meet with us about selling our house. I think people respect that more Correct. That's not, you know, and I'm never a mess. I'm never, you know, I don't show up grungy or anything, but I, I might just, I'm not going to be dressy and fancy for it. You know, it's just like, I'm going to show up as me every single time. And I have learned those moments that I try to not show up as me. One time I remember in particular, I was like, I should try harder. And I put on a pair of heels and I put on a little skirt and I put on all this other stuff. And I got myself all, I didn't feel like myself yeah, during it. And really shown through to my it wasn't even a client. They ended up not even buying a house with me. I think the whole thing was so uncomfortable. I should have just shown up just as me, right? Whatever me is, make that happen. And I think that it makes your family and your kids that more comfortable when you're just mom, your mom, whether you're with them, your mom, whether you're running out the door to go meet with a client, just you're, that's me. That's me right now. I'm mom. Yeah. I don't want to be anything besides mom and a really kick-ass real estate agent, mm -hmm. right? But that's yeah. part of being mom too. Yeah. And I think that's where a lot of people do struggle because they're like, who am I then? I think that is something that so many people don't find out is like, who are you? You are not just a mom. You're not just a real estate agent. You're not just a, a wife, but who are you truly? And one of my favorite quotes is work hard. I think it was Jim Rohn, work harder on yourself than you do at your career. And I think when you can work on yourself every single day, because just like fitness, it is something that you work on every day. You work on your spirituality every day. You work on being a mom and a spouse every day. So you need to work on yourself every yes. single day. Just look at the at airplane situation scenario. If the airplane is crashing, who do you put the oxygen on first? yourself. Mm -hmm. Because yep. if you can't help yourself, you can't help anybody else. So we okay. have to be able to put that time into ourselves, even if it means that we're only taking a half hour or an hour to read, meditate, journal, mm -hmm. exercise. We need those times, especially as a mompreneur, because yes. it is draining. You will run yourself ragged. You would have burnt yourself out if you would have kept up that pace and that mentality the way you did the first year and a half. You would have burnt yourself out. As an yep. agent. I was one and as a mom and a spouse. I was half done. Yeah. I said, I hate real estate. This is stupid. Yeah. This is ridiculous. Once I learned that it was okay for me to show up as me, 
I didn't have to miss the football game just because I didn't have time to run home and get ready before the listing appointment 30 minutes after it or whatnot, right? I didn't have to miss that in order to go. It totally shifts everything. I just think it's being you is literally the most beautiful thing you can be. Mm -hmm. And if people don't want you because you're showing up as you, you didn't want them in the first place. But I promise you that won't happen. Everybody will be fine with you. Yeah. Yeah. And I like getting dressed up. Don't get me wrong. I really do. But I have found myself that I am so much more comfortable, really literally in the outfit that I'm wearing today. I do like the earrings. I like doing all of that but I have tennis shoes on. I have jeans on. I like to be comfortable and Mm -hmm. I'll wear the heels in the summertime once in a while. But if I know if I'm going to be walking quite a bit, probably not going to happen. I'll (laughs) never forget. I wore, it was awful. I wore this dress, super cute, but it showed everything. Like when it comes to sweat, like everything. (laughs) And last summer we had some extremely hot days. So I'm wearing this dang dress. I'm so mad. This deal did not get put together because I'm sitting there. I bet it's a hundred and some degrees in heels, this dress. And I couldn't, the lockbox was not working. It was. (laughs) You start sweating even more. I am drenched in sweat in this (laughs) dang dress. Super cute. But these clients met them for the first time and they're thinking this lady is a freaking hot mess. She is sweating up and down her back. (laughs) Literally sweating up and down her back, sweating up and down the front, like everything. It was so nasty. And I bet I was outside for like 15 minutes. Well, when it's 110 degrees, that dress, that light purple dress was now a dark purple, splotchy <laughs> purple. So, <laughs> but oh, I think that, that if I would have been more, a little bit more comfortable, I yeah. probably could have, it probably would have went a lot smoother, but it was, uh, you know, too looking fun. back, you can look, you can laugh at those things, but oh yeah. my gosh, it was awful. <laughs> yeah. Oh Lord of mercy. I bet you they got quite the kick out of it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I just hope that I can humor somebody throughout exactly. the day and make somebody else's, somebody else smile. But so what is one piece of advice that if you could give anybody or somebody new or a mompreneur, what is one piece of advice that you would give them? Find your tribe. Real estate is such a lonely business if you don't have your people in real estate. And I I ran on my own for a while and it was very lonely and I felt very trapped, I guess, in my own head. And it wasn't until I found the other mama, right? And then we started to build our own little group of mamas and we all leaned on each other. That has just launched into this beautiful tribe of women here who love to, we we have our codes, right? If you have a really hard day, we go out and we get cheeseburgers. If we had to go out and we want to celebrate, we go out and we get margaritas and tacos, right? Like we have our stuff. We all know and understand each other. We love to get together. Friendship and finding your people just creates the want to move forward in your world and with your family and with your business and whatever it is you're trying to build. So I would say that's a huge piece of it. Don't let yourself be on an island and find the people that you can connect with. That helps create your own harmony. That's self-care. That's taking care of yourself and taking care of the people around you. The other thing is if you're getting to the point in your career you're starting to drown. For me, before I really hired in my first solo transaction coordinator, I had 17 pending at the same time. I probably had about 20 buyers I was working with and a ton of listings hitting the market. Mm -hmm. And it was in that moment that I went, I screwed up. I am so busy right now. I think I was like heartway through my third year, verging on my fourth year. And I went, I should have hired somebody before I got to this point. Now I'm trying to train somebody new in how to do transaction coordination and how to help out with all these busy pieces of my business while I'm literally in the thick of the busiest time I've ever had. And I wish I would have recognized the signs that I was getting ready to really break open on things and hired somebody in when I had the chance. And you don't have to pay them a ton of money. It can be somebody part-time, whatever it is. But if you're At that point in your real estate career where you are starting to drown every single day, that's your cue. That's your time to go find somebody. And I wish I would have done it sooner. Yeah. What is that saying? You don't invest in like the wealthy invest in time when the poor Mm -hmm. invest in money. And when you can invest in your time, I view everything, everything as return on time, not on ROI, return on investment, I view it as return on time because Mm -hmm. time and health is something that you will never, like once you're out of it, you're scraping for anything just to get those two things back. 
Absolutely. So, so time and health are two things that we need to, as humans, anybody need to focus on. You don't yeah. always want to trade time for money. That's not the way you want to live your life. You don't. And yeah, I think this was an absolutely amazing conversation. And I truly appreciate you being here and, and talking about your knowledge in as a veteran. So one, thank you for your service and your husband mm -hmm. as well. And the sacrifices that you guys have made over the years, not only as an individual, but your family life too. You know, I think you can, you know, the sacrifices that veterans do make all the time on a, on a daily, regular basis, even if they are not deployed. It's just what they do here, even in the States to make those sacrifices. So truly, truly, truly appreciate that. But no, I think this was a very insightful conversation. I know <laughs> that I believe you were the one who talked at Rebar regarding Canva. Is that right? Oh, yes. Uh -huh. Okay. Yes. I work with Rebar. So I thought I had recognized your name. And then when you had oh, talked more about Canva, I was like, yep, nope, that's who it was. So that's fantastic. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yep. That's so fun that you were there for that. Yes. Yes. And mm -hmm. so, yeah, if any, you know, whoever's listening, uh, Canva is a big thing. Just pay for the pro. It will help project your oh, so much. Yes. I yes. love Canva. And I don't even think I use it to the point where you do or the way to where it could be, you know? Yeah. So, and then, yeah, go ahead. We do a ton of Canva classes. So we have Canva master classes, things like okay. that, that Jen Tucker and I pump out. So if you ever want that out there for your brokerage or the agents in your area, we can just schedule a time to do a Zoom because we really deep dive how you set up your whole branding board, how you set up like the QR codes, how you bring AI into Canva, how you can use all of the magic edits on it, like all sorts of stuff. So if you guys ever want that, just let us know and we can just set up a time that you can bring in any agents you want in your market and we can deep dive all of that. Absolutely. We'll talk more about that here in a little bit, but I definitely want to thank you for joining today, taking the time out of your day. You've been yes. able to put people in the right places so you can show up to something mm -hmm. like this because your first year and a half, you probably wouldn't have had time to be able to step away no. from business for an hour and a half to be Correct. able to have this conversation with me. So it's just sharing your knowledge and your expertise, not only with me, which I truly appreciate, but with our audience as well. So I want to thank you for being here. If anybody has any questions or if they want to learn more about Canva, is there somewhere that they can go to follow you or connect with you? Yeah, I mean, the best place would probably be just to get on Facebook and just go okay. to Copper Group. So if you go up to the search bar and put in Copper Group, you guys will see Copper Group pop up. That's my team that we run out here. Jen and I run that. And then you guys can just send us a message right through that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, April, for being on here. We'll stay connected for sure. And again, thank you for sharing your knowledge and your experience with us today. Aw, thank you, Shay. This was so much fun today. I really enjoyed it. Yes. Awesome. Thank you. If you found value in today's conversation, don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you never miss an episode. And hey, sharing is caring, right? Share this podcast with your fellow mompreneurs, friends, and anyone who you feel could use a dose of inspiration. Share it on your social media as well. But most importantly, if you found this episode helpful, please, please, please leave me a five-star review. This helps get our information out to those who have never heard or seen us before. Are you feeling inspired and you're sure that you could add some value to the podcast? Shoot me a message and let's talk. We love hearing from you. So connect with us on social media. Tag me at Shay J Spitz. That's S-H-A-E-J-S-P-I-T-Z and share your thoughts and takeaways or even suggest topics you'd like to have us explore more in the future episodes. Remember, you're not alone on this journey. Your resilience is your strength and your pursuit of abundant living is truly remarkable. As always, keep thriving, keep growing, and keep embracing the beautiful chaos of being a mompreneur. Until next time, take care, stay real, and keep living abundantly.